good morning to all of you now we are going to see valves pumps and fans first objectives comprehend the basic construction and application of the valves used comprehend the basic operations and application of the different pumps know the bernoulli principle the concept of pressure and net positive suction and be familiar with the operation and application of centrifugal and axial fans first of all valves we are going to see the detailed description of the valves and various types first definition devices which control the amount and direction of fluid flow in piping system typically made of bronze brass iron or steel alloy common components valve body disc seat bonnet packing packing gland nut stem and wheel types of valves guys a two basic flows start valve start valve is to shut up or partially shut up the fluid flow example globe gate plug valve needle valve and butterfly valve next second category is check valves used to permit flow in one in only one direction example ball check valve swing check valve lift check valve special types we have a three special types relief valves pressure reducing valves remote operated valves first one we are going to see the stop valves globe valves most common type of stop valve is the global valve used in steam and water and and oil lines disc attached to the valve stem rest against seat to shut up fluid flow advantage used for throttling and disadvantage is flow resistance if this is a schematic diagram of globe valve we have a construction stem a stem wheel nut wheel gland packing and packing nut bonnet disc stem ring lock washer Unit bonnet ring, disc washer, uh, disc valve seat, and basic body. This is a schematic diagram of globe valve. Next stop valve. Used when there must be straight line flow of fluid within minimum resistance. Gate usually wedge shaped or a vertical disc. Advantages: no flow restrictions and disadvantages. Poor throttling. This is a schematic diagram of a gate valve. We have a construction. The construction we have a yoke sleeve, nut, yoke sleeve, yoke, yoke sleeve, wheel, stem, bonnet, body bonnet, bolts, bonnet bushings, gate or this body. Next start valve, butterfly valves. Used in water, fuel and ventilation systems. Advantages. small lightweight and quick acting disadvantages leaks early and only low flow throttle ball valves similar to the butterfly valves normally found in sea water sanitary trim and drain and hydraulic systems this is a schematic diagram of butterfly valves in the construction we have handle position plate body seat butterfly type disc then check valves controls the direction of flow operated by a flow of fluid in pipe types swing check disc moves through them or lift check a disc moves up and down ball check ball is located at the end of stem and lift to allow flow it is a three type we have first one is swing check if the disc moves through an arc If it is a disc moves through an arc, means the check is a swing check. If the disc moves up and down, means if the check is lift check. If ball is located at the end of stem and the lift to allow flow, means it is a ball check. We have a three types of check. First one, this is schematic diagram of swing check valve. We have a arm, a disc, hinge pin, disc nut. This is a schematic diagram. Next, Wait, relief valve used to used to protect piping system from excessive pressure. Opens automatically when the fluid pressure becomes too high. The 
pressure acts against spring pressure. Relief pressure set by an adjusting screw. We have an adjusting screw to adjust the relieving pressure and then we have a protect piping system from used to protect the excessive pressure. Okay. Next, pressure reducing valves. Pressure reducing valves used to automatically provide a steady lower pressure to a system from higher pressure source used in air, lube oil, sea water and other systems. Then, remote operated valve, valves that allow operation from distant stations. That means it is called as remote operated valves. We have a four types. First one is mechanical, second one is hydraulic, then third one is motor, fourth one is solenoid. Then in the first mechanical type, we use reach rods and ESS. Then in the hydraulic type, we use fluid and piston setup. Motor, we use the uh, electric or pneumatic motor. The solenoid type, we use coil and core mechanism to open or close on an electric signal. From this, we have a four type of valves, mechanical type, hydraulic, motor type and solenoid type. My name then, is Matt Foley and I am a motivational speaker. This, we have a conclude with the valves, then we are going to see the pumps. Pumps definition. It is a device that uses an external power source to apply a force to a fluid in order to move it from one place to another place. Move must overcome first one frictional force from a large quantities of fluids. Then second one is difference in static pressure between the two locations. It must provide any velocity desired. So it is a device that uses an external power source to apply a force to a fluid in order to move it from one place to another place. Pump related with the Bernoulli's theorem. We have three types of head. Pressure head, velocity head, friction head. Pressure head, it is used to measure the fluid mechanical potential energy. Here velocity head is used to measure the fluid's mechanical kinetic energy. The friction head measures the energy lost that heads the equation is actually Z1 plus P1 divided by rho plus V1 square divided by 2G is equal to Z2 plus P2 divided by rho plus V2 square divided by 2G plus U2 minus U1 minus W minus Q. And Z divided by Z is the fluid height, V divided by V is the fluid velocity and then Q is equal to heat transfer, pressure P fluid pressure U internal energy H enthalpy rho fluid density W work G means gravitational uh, acceleration. The bottom line the total energy within the control volume is constant under the excess condition. Then components of pumps. What are the components we have? First one drive mechanism. Drive mechanism it is steam or electric or gear mechanism. Then pump shaft. Then impeller or piston. Then fourth one is casing. Types of pump. Next we are going to see that what are the types of pump we are having. Positive displacement pump, first type. Fixed volume of fluid is displaced during each cycle regardless of static head pressure pumping against. It uses either a piston, gear or screw type within a reciprocating or rotary gear or rotary screw etc. This is a one type of pump. It is a positive displacement pump. This is a schematic diagram of various positive displacement pumps. Example reciprocating type, gear type, screw type, moving main type. This is all the four positive displacement pumps. First one is reciprocating type, gear type, screw type and moving wave type. Next, non-positive displacement. The first one is positive displacement pump. Then second one is non-positive displacement. Volume of fluid is dependent on the static pressure. It is known as non-positive displacement. Example, centrifugal. Impeller inside a case called volume. Impeller is a disc or curved veins mounted radially like a paddle wheel. 
structure is the eye flowing as relation as it travels out there and then enters volume. Then second one is propeller. Use propeller inside casing to move the fluid, not use much in navy. Then this is a schematic diagram of centrifugal pump. So we have a two type, simple volume type, diffuse, diffuser type. In the simple volume type, we have a nozzle volume space impeller. In the uh, diffuser type, revolving impeller and stationary diffusers are uh, This is a major difference of the two volume type and diffuser pump. The pump, jet pumps. Bernoulli, it works based on the Bernoulli's principle and no moving parts is there. This is a major advantage. Velocity head, pressure velocity and pressure head. H in is plus B square divided by 2 is equal to H out plus B square out divided by 2. Here H is the enthalpy, B is the velocity. Then jet pump. We have a two types. Adductor, ejector. First one is adductor which is used to pump liquids. Ejector is used to pump gas. Two types of jet pump is that. First one is adductor. The second thing is ejector. Adductor is used to pump liquids. Ejector is used to pump gases. Pump characteristics cause. We have a pump parameter. We have four pump parameters. First one is pump speed. Unit is revolution per minute. Then second thing is volumetric flow rate. GPM, then pump head HP, then power produced in horsepower. Then the centrifugal pump class B is that means volumetric flow rate is directly proportional to pump speed. Volumetric flow rate is directly proportional to pump speed. Then HP pump head is directly proportional to the square of the pump speed. Pump head is directly proportional to the square of the pump speed. Then W work output is directly proportional to the cube root of the cube of the pump speed. These are the three basic laws of centrifugal pump. Then net positive net net positive suction head definition that pressure link required at the section of a pump. To prevent cavitation, so that is pressure required at the section of a pump to prevent cavitation. So, what is cavitation? The formation of bubbles due to low pressure area under the subsequent collapse upon migration to a higher pr pressure area. The formation of bubbles due to low pressure area and the subsequent collapses upon migration to a higher pressure area. Cavitation causes, cavitation causes uh, noise and damage. Next, need enough pressure at the section side so that the pump does not reduce the pressure at the I to cause. Then if P is greater than P saturation, that is saturation pressure, the water flashes to vapor causing damage to the pump. What are the possible means of providing NPSH to prevent cavitation? Then fans, same principle of non-positive displacement pumps. Types, we have a two types, centrifugal type, axial type. Axial type is like a propeller. Centrifugal is a majority used for compressor. Then axial type is belong to the cooling fans. This is a basic schematic diagram of centrifugal type fan and propeller type of fan. Then centrifugal pump. It is a various air handling methods, air handling and priming of centrifugal pumps. Because of a roll and pitch, marine pumps at times have to handle very highly aerated water even under flooded suction conditions. 
in only moderate weather. The amount of air can be sufficient to airlock a non-self priming pump if the water inlets or suctions are not well placed. Expansion of the air at the pump entry and its subsequent compression in the pump gives a rise to noise similar to the cavitation, especially in positive displacement pumps where the compression is rapid. Also, it can be very destructive of pump and pipe material by corrosion, erosion or both. Then, pumps may be mounted above the level of the liquid to be pumped even though placed low in the ship and they must be equipped with the means to create a vacuum in the pipeline. Some others must be similarly equipped so that the maximum amount of liquid can be extracted from the tanks, bills, etc. To achieve this, the air handling facilities must be good. As the velocity of the outer tips of the impeller of a centrifugal pump is relatively low, the section effect of the pump when empty rarely exceeds 12 mm water gauge and a centrifugal pump must be primed with the water as it cannot exhaust the contained air as a displacement pump can. When the pump is placed below the level of the water as in marine circulatory cells, the filling is affected by opening the injection valve on the ship side and the air cock on the top of the pump casing. The pump is fully primed when the solid water emerges from the air cock. Then, various air handling methods new. Then, when we consider the centrifugal pump, we have a priming in the more important uh, methods to clear the vacuum. Then, air handling methods. Air extraction on the most pump is required, especially on the all built pumps. Yes. All air extraction on most pumps is required, especially on all built pumps. Early design of circulating pumps employed a steam ejector on the volume casing together with a steam jet into the casing to condense and prime or a direct water priming wall. Later designs of centrifugal pump incorporated a separate air pump. In the first type, the air is separated from the water in the suction chamber. It rises and is withdrawn by the air pump via a flow operated by twin single acting air pumps are fitted driven by worm and wheel from the pump spindle and our crank driven. The pumps are capable of operating floated should the float gear break down but in normal operation the fluted water suction closes the valve and air pumps idle. In the more modern designs, rotary types usually replaces the reciprocating air and pumps. Then, types of air pumps. Types of air pumps are first type is recirculation of discharge. This is a very in inefficient method. Then, second one is liquid ring primer. This type is most frequently used. Its air handling capacity is Good. The extractor are being vented to the atmosphere, although it can be used to pump against pressure. It is used as a gas compressor and as an air exhauster. This is a schematic diagram of liquid ring primer unit. Air gulps are quickly cleared. A small air leakages and aerated water are continuously handled without fall in pump performance. The liquid ring air pump consists of a bladder circular rotor surrounded on the underside rotating in an oval casing. Sealing water is drawn into a barpool casing through a makeup supply pipe. The water follows the periphery of the casing due to the centrifugal force imported in, uh, to it by the rotor and the water ring revolving eccentric to the plate reduces from and reapproaches the rotor was twice in one revolution, thus producing in effect a series of reciprocating water pistons between the blades. 
the inner edge of the water ring forms the boundary of the two eccentric cones around the rotor bus while the blades run fall of water this is a liquid ring at pump schematic diagram assuming the space between each blade to be a cylinder then in one half revolution the water is thrown from f out to g and back again to f consisting one suction and one discharge stroke and this occurs twice in one revolution it will be understood therefore that if shaped section and the discharge ports are provided in way of the path of the assembly course formed by the rotating water air will be drawn through the suction ports and expelled through the discharge ports as the plate passes the ports such ports are arranged in the stationary rotor plate fitted in the tower above the rotor in each revolution therefore water reduces from the rotor pass drawing air through the suction ports in the rotor plate into the assembly course of the water ring from when when as it is forced through a discharge ports in the rotor plates after the points of maximum throw out at g have been forced and the water re approaches the rotor boss a continuous supply of drilling water is circulated from the reservoir to the whirlpool casing and is discharged with the air back to the reservoir the this circulation ensures that a full water ring is maintained and the cooling coil incorporated in the reservoir limits the temperature rise of the ceiling water during long periods of operation the supply for the cooling coil can be taken from any convenient sea water connections about 0.152 liters per second is required that the pressure not exceeding to bar the reservoir has a cooling coil through which passes sea water and this cools the fresh water which gets heated due to the carving action of the air pump impeller and this is a schematic diagram of a liquid ink air pump then alternate to explanation the usual suction separating chamber and ball float are provided but the air connection from the top of the ball float chamber is taken to the rotary air pump which is directly driven by an extension of the motor spindle on the top of the pump the rotor revolves in the special variable shaped chamber which is supplied with the fresh water from a reservoir in the air pump casing due to the casing the shape of the water is made up of flow from and towards the rotor center during each revolution the water motion is utilized to act as as suction and discharge for the air through appropriate set of ports the air pump can be placed in or out of operation by a control cock on the front of the air pump casing the principle of operation is referred to as the watering principle as the impeller vanes passes the suction pump air is drawn in and trapped between the water ring and the pump shaft this slug of the air is carried around the around and delivered to the discharge port hence this pump is a dispositive displacement type in some ship plants are the priming connections for all pumps etc or led to an external exhausting system the system under the operation of automatic compressor functions to give the primary priming from the central control station to all units in the engine room as required then driving primer this type of priming pump may be either the reciprocating or rotor type but they cannot accommodate mixture of air and water therefore when this type is used some short of the protective device must be incorporated between the centrifugal pump and the primary primer pump so as to prevent water from the entering the primer pump ejector if sized correctly these are the effective but their efficiency is low priming ejectors works on the jet principle using steam compressed air or water as the operating system medium the operating medium is fed in as shown in as it is forced uh, passes into the divergent pot there is a falling pressure which sucks up the 
medium to be pumped. If an adjector is used with the centrifugal pump, it is mounted at the base of the pump and near the suction line. Then second one is assembly vane primer has a good air handling but light can be short due to rear of the vane tips and jamming in slots. This is a schematic diagram of rotary air extraction pump. Main pump under the priming conditions are first one at the initial start of the main pump there is no discharge pressure the spring keeps operating piston towards A that by keeping the friction clutch engaged. Then second thing is engagement of friction clutch runs air extraction pump which sucks the air from the suction side of the main pump and also water from the vessel. And the main pump under the operation third, thing, third one is Third thing is, as the main pump fills up and discharge the pressure build up, water pressure acts at A and pushing operating piston towards B thereby disengaging friction clutch and thus cutting out the air extraction pump. Fourth thing is, the rotor casing is continuously pulled by a closed water circuit from the pump discharge around the air pump jacket and returned to the pump section. This is a schematic diagram of ejector type. Then working system. First one. Pump starts but no discharge. Pressure transmitter sends the signal to a pump pressure controller. Controller sends the signal to a selector or transmitter relay. Two output signals from selector or transmitter relay. First one is to open the solenoid valve B. Second thing is to open the solenoid valve A. Solenoid valve B allows the air to flow through Venturi. In line crank shaft prevent system, which is used pump piston pump, the axial piston pump in a line inline axial piston pump, we have two types: swash plate axial piston pump, oval plate axial piston pump. The second thing is bent axial piston type. Finally, we have a radial piston type. This is a schematic diagram of swash plate pump. This is a schematic diagram of oval plate pump. This is a bell axis pump. This is a construction of a radial piston pump. Then micro pumps. In the micro pumps play a significant role in the microfluidal uh, systems of pumps. Micro pumps were started in the middle of 1980s. Before 1990s, the mechanical pumps were mainly studied after 1990s. Non mechanical pumps are introduced. Presently, most micro pumps aim to fluid piping. Then, membrane pump. Membrane pump often consists of two check valves and chamber with mobile membrane. By some mechanisms, membrane can be actuated to change the value of chamber. Because the check valve can be opened only in one direction for each circuit, some fluid will be moved from inlet to outlet. This is a schematic diagram of electrostatic membrane pump. The advantage is goodness, low power, good control of actuation and stop, short response time, a disadvantage is weakness, high actuation, actuation voltage and small stroke. Then this is a piezoelectric membrane pump. This is a thermodynamic membrane pump. A shape membrane alloy driven membrane pump. This is a rotary pump. It is a magnetically driven pump. Magnetic stator and central pin are permanently. Then rotors are separately made and assembled into a pump by hand. Problems are the complex fabrication process and reliability. Diffusion pump. Difference between the diffuser pump and membrane pump is that, is that diffusion pump has no check valves instead two diffusers are used. Diffuser is a channel with an increasing cross-sectional area and the fluid pressure is one way or another it will encounter the different flow resistance caused by the diffuser. Non-mechanical pump. Without moving parts, mobile parts, non-mechanical pump is often much simpler than the mechanical pump. Non-mechanical pump includes EHD pump, bubble pump, other pumps. This is an EHD pump. EHD pump uses applied electric field to induce and drag charges in the fluid. This is two successive pumping photos. 
it is next valves it is a devices which controls the amount and direction of fluid flow in piping system typically it is made up of bronze or brass iron or steel alloys the main components of the valves are valve bodies packing packing clamps disc seat stem bonnet and wheel Oh, then we have two basic group of valves first one is stack valve then second thing is check valves in the stack valves we used to shut up or partially shut up the fluid flow example globe gate plug needle and butterfly valves then in the second type we have check valves which is able to permit the flow in only one direction example ball check valve sink check valve lip check valve etc special types we have three special types relief valves pressure reducing valves then remote operated valves the stack valve first thing is globe valve it is most common type of stack valve which is used in steam air water and oil lines disc attached to a valve stem rests against stick to shut up flow of fluid advantage used for throttling purpose and disadvantage is flow resistant then second this is a schematic diagram of flow valve then second type is gate valve which is used when there must be straight line flow of fluid within a minimum resistance gate usually wedge shape or vertical disc advantage is no flow resistance disadvantage is poor throttling then this is a schematic diagram of gate valve then butterfly valves used in water fuel for fuel and ventilation systems advantages small lightweight and quick acting disadvantages is leaks early and only low flow throttle then ball valves similar to butterfly valves normally found in sea water sanitary trim and drain and hydraulic system this is schematic diagram of butterfly valves then check valves controls the direction of flow operated by a flow of fluid in pipe types swing check type lift check type then ball check type in swing check type disc moves through an arc in the lift check the disc moves up and down ball check the ball is located at the end of stem and the lift it to allow the flow of fluid this is a schematic diagram of ski a uh, swing check valve then swing valve used to protect piping system from excessive pressure opens automatically when the fluid pressure becomes too high the pressure acts against the spring pressure relieving pressure sets by an adjusting screw then pressure reducing valves used to automatically provide a steady lower pressure to a system from a higher pressure source used in air low boil sea water and other pressure systems remote operated valves valves that allow operation from distant station types we have a four types first one is mechanical hydraulic motor and solenoid in the mechanical type uses a reach rods and gears in the hydraulic type we uses fluid and piston setup in the motor we use an electric or pneumatic motor in the solenoid we use coil and core mechanism to open or close an electric system. my name is and matt foley power. and i am a motivational it speaker this is a device that uses an external power source to apply forces to a fluid in order to move it from one place to another place must overcome the physical frictional force or resistance from large quantities of a fluid then difference in static pressure between the two location must provide any velocity desired then pumps regarding with the pedal is three run first one is we have a three head pressure head velocity head frictional head pressure head it is a measure of fluid cancel pressure pe then fluid pressure head velocity head measure of fluid mechanical kinetic energy ke then frictional head measure of energy loss that is fluid the equation is actually 
is that one plus p1 divided by rho plus v square v1 square divided by 2g is equal to is that two plus p2 divided by rho plus v2 square divided by 2g plus u2 minus u1 minus w minus q q plus w sharp is equal to h2 minus h1 plus v2 square minus v1 square divided by 2 plus g into z2 minus z1 that is that S equal to fluid height, V is equal to fluid velocity, U is equal to heat transfer, P fluid pressure, U internal energy, H enthalpy, Rho fluid density, W work, G gravitational uh, acceleration. Main components of pumps, the drive mechanism and steam or whether it may be an electric or it may be a gear type. The pump, the second thing is pump shaft. Then impeller or piston. Then third one is casing. The types of pump. We have a two type positive displacement type. Then second thing is non positive displacement. In the positive displacement pump, fixed volume of fluid is displaced during the each cycle regardless of the static head pressure pumping against. Uh, Uses either a piston or gear or screw type or reciprocating rotary gear or rotary screw etc. This is the positive displacement pump. Fixed volume of fluid is displaced during each cycle regardless of static head or pressure pumping against it. This is an example of positive displacement pump. First one is reciprocating pump, then gear type, screw type, then moving vein type. In the reciprocating type, we have a plunger and cylinder barrel in a suction manifold, suction valve, discharge valve, discharge manifold, etc. Prime mover, etc. In the reciprocated type. We in the gear type, we have a two gear. One side we have a suction and another side we have a discharge side. In the screw type, we have a, a screw is a major part of the one side is a suction type, another side is a delivery discharge type. In the moving vein type, the veins are an important parts of swinging types of moving veins are important parts. We have a cylinder, rotor, also. These are the four example, main example of positive displacement pumps are reciprocating pump, gear pump, screw type, and moving vein type. Non this is second type is a non positive displacement. Volume of fluid is dependent on the static head or pressure. Centrifugal. Impeller inside a case called volume. Impeller is, is the disc curved veins mounted really like a paddle wheel. The suction is the eye fluid accelerated as it travels outward and then enters volume. Propeller uses propeller inside a casing to move fluid, not used much in the Volume of fluid is different on the static and pressure mean it is a called non-positive displacement pump. The example of non-positive displacement pump is a centrifugal pump. In the centrifugal pump, we have two types, a simple volume pump and a fusion pump. Type. Then a jet pump, that which works on the basic principle of the is and no moving parts. Then we have a two types of jet pump. One is ejector, then second thing is ejector. Ejector is used to pump a liquid, ejector is used to pump a gases. Then pump parameters and centrifugal pump. Pump parameters are speed n, revolution per minute, volumetric flow rate b gpm, pump head hp, and power p in hp. A centrifugal pump laws are Volumetric flow rate is directly proportional to pump speed. Then pump head is directly proportional to the square of the pump speed. Then work output is directly proportional to the cube of the pump speed. Then net positive suction head. Depression, the pressure required at the suction of the pump to prevent cavitation. So what is cavitation? The formation of bubbles due to low pressure area and the subsequent collapse upon migration to a higher pressure. Cavitation causes noises and damage. The formation of bubbles due to a lower pressure area and the subsequent collapses upon a migration to a higher pressure area. 
need enough pressure on the suction side so that the pump does not reduce its pressure at the I A cross. A P that can greater than the P saturation water flashes to a vapor causing damage to the pump. What are the possible means of providing in case to prevent cavitation? Then fans. Same principle as the non-positive displacement pump. We have two types of fans. First one is centrifugal pump. The second thing is axial pump. The centrifugal pump majority used for the compression. In the axial type, we have a used in the cooling fans. This is a schematic diagram of centrifugal type of fan, propeller type of fan. Then centrifugal pump. Because of the roll and pitch, the marine pumps at times we have to handle very highly elevated water even under further suction conditions in only moderate weather. The amount of air can be sufficient for air lock and non self priming pump if the water inlets or sections are not well planned. Expansion of the air at the pump entry is subsequent compressions in the pump gives a rise to a noise similar to the cavitation, especially in positive displacement pump. Where compression is rapid, also it can be very respective of pump and pump pipe material by corrosions, erosions, both. Pumps may be mounted above the level of the liquid to be pumped, even though placed in low in ships, and they must be equipped with the means to create a vacuum in a pipeline. Some others must be similarly equipped so that the maximum amount of liquid can be extracted from the tanks built in to achieve this, the air handling facilities must be good. As the velocity of the outer tips of the impeller of a centrifugal pump is relatively low, the suction effects of the pump when the MT rarely exceeds 12 mm water gauge and centrifugal pump must be primed with the water as it cannot be exhausted the contained air as the displacement pump can. When the pump is placed below the level of the water as in marine circulating cells, the filling is affected by opening the injection valve on the ship side and the air hook on the top of the pump cable. The pump is fully primed when the solid water emerges from the air hook. Air handling the air extraction and the most pump is required, especially in all beach pumps. The early design of circulating pumps employed a steam ejector on the volume casing together with the steam jet into their casing to a contents and prime or a direct water priming water. Later designs of centrifugal pump is incorporated as a separate pump. In the first types of air is separated from the water in the suction chamber. It rises at the end is withdrawn by the air pump via a float operator. The twin single acting air pumps are lifted, driven by the warm and warm wheel from the pump splinter and are cranked to it. The pumps are capable of operating through that should be that. A float gear break down and in the normal operation in the flooded water suction closes the float valve and the air pump idle. In the more modern designs, rotary types usually replace the reciprocating air pump. The types of air pumps, the types of air pump is first one is recirculation of discharge. This is a very inefficient method. The first type is an actually it is an inefficient method. The second thing is liquid ring primer. This is a type of, this type of is mostly, most frequently used. Its air handling capacity is very good. The extracted air being minted to atmosphere, although it can be used to pump against pressure, it is used as a gas compressor and as an air exhaust. Thank you, thank you very much.